Appalachia has produced folks with tremendous artistic talent, from writing to art to filmmaking to music. Today we tell the story of a musical legend from the hills of Southwest Virginia. Hello folks, I'm Steve Gilling, along with Rod Mullins, and this is Stories, A History of Appalachia. For those of you watching on our YouTube channel, be sure to click that subscribe button down below, ding the bell for updates, and give us a thumbs up, please. Well, Steve, we talk about someone that's from, well, my neck of the woods, especially, close by. But, uh, you know, some of these things, I didn't know that much about him until we uncovered him and the story came out that we have finally found out a little bit more about this legend in himself. That's right. And he started out there in Dickinson County mm -hmm. along with his brother and basically ended up um, becoming world famous. Not very many people come out of Dickinson County that is world famous, okay? <laughs> Let's just say that. But, you know, there are people that come out famous, but not world famous. So here we go. Oh, well, people know who we're talking about. It's Ralph oh, Stanley. That's right. And he was born on February 25th, 1927, near McClure, Virginia, in a place called Big Sprattle Creek to Lee and Lucy Stanley. You know, music wasn't a huge part of the Stanley household, at least not until he was 15. That's when his mother bought an old banjo from his aunt for him in return for groceries from the family store. His banjo teacher, you might be asking? Well, it was his mother. You see, she came from a musical family of 12, all of whom could play the five-string banjo, and apparently she wanted her son to continue that musical tradition. And Rod, Ralph Stanley did just that. Yeah, he did. I don't know if you've ever noticed on the old videos or film or anything like that of the way that he mm -hmm. played the banjo, but yeah. it was unique. It was different. And a lot of people yeah. were like, they copied that style, but it was just the way he played. It was not like, a, oh gosh, we, we could bring up a Mother Maybell, kind of like that claw hammer sort of thing, mm -hmm. you know, and stuff. But it was, it was different. There was just something different about the way that he played it. Yeah, and it all came from his mother. Right. Yeah, I mean, music, music, just galore coming out of that family right there. So he graduated high school in 1945, and two weeks later, he was inducted into the U.S. Army, where he served for a year, after which he returned home and decided whether he wanted to be a veterinarian or not. Instead, he and his older brother, Carter, who played guitar, decided to form a country group, the Clinch Mountain Boys. Well, instead of the country sound and style at the time, the Stanley brothers developed a different style of music, incorporating the sound of Carter family with the singing style of the Primitive Baptist Universalist Church, which we now recognize as bluegrass music. And boy, did they catch on, too. Appearing on the Norton, Virginia radio station, WNVA, as we remember, and then also on to the big time in Bristol at WCYB radio. That's when WCYB was a radio station. Okay. There they had started the farm and fun time show, which was on the air for the next 12 years with some breaks here and there. You know, Rod, you and I have been on that Norton radio station, but we just never caught on. <laughs> no, we, we certainly didn't. You know, what, what, did, what did we call ourselves in that last podcast that we did? Something like gas-filled bags or something like yeah, that? Yeah, something That's like that. That's probably the reason why we never <laughs> did catch on or something. So, Well, at first they'd cover other bluegrass artists like Bill Monroe, but before long the Stanley Brothers started writing and performing their own songs, mainly compositions by Carter Stanley. Now, these songs did so well, Columbia Records signed them to a contract as the Stanley Brothers, ironically causing Bill Monroe to leave Columbia for Decca Records. In the late 50s, the Stanleys left Columbia to sign with King Records, where they recorded the song Finger Poppin' Time, in which some of the fingers popping, and I, I did not know this, hmm. belonged to fellow King Records artist James Brown and his band, who happened to be in the studio the day the song was recorded. Now, wait a minute. Are we talking the same James Brown of I yes. Feel Good? Uh-huh, that, that James Brown. Wow, now that I did not know. Man, gives a whole new meaning to living in America when you hear that song on the radio now. I mean, wow. Well, anyway, let's let's move on here. Carter and Ralph performed as the Stanley Brothers until 1966 when Carter died. 
Ralph continued the name and the act as a solo until his death. Now, he reformed the Clinch Mountain Boys as a backup band, which included many future country stars, including one Ricky Skaggs and another Keith Whitley, both from neighboring eastern Kentucky. Now, even though Ralph Stanley was now a star, he still thought of home and what he thought of was running for office. In 1970, he ran for, of all things, Clerk of Court and Commissioner of Revenue in Dickinson County. Now, he ended up losing that race and never ran for office again. According to Ralph Stanley, What happened is somebody traded me off. They used my popularity and money to elect somebody else. I was done dirty, and I'm so proud that I was done dirty because if I'd been elected, I would have had a job to do. Maybe would have finally quit. So that's the one time I was done dirty, and I want to thank them for it now. Well, in 1976, LMU awarded Stanley an honorary doctorate in music, which is why he is often referred to as Dr. Ralph Stanley. He was inducted into the International Bluegrass Music Hall of Honor in 1992 and again in 2000 and was the first person inducted into the Grand Ole Opry in the 21st century. I didn't know about the Opry thing. I thought Mm -hmm. that had kind of slipped by, but wow, I didn't know that. In 2000, though, he was one of the many bluegrass and blues artists featured in the soundtrack to the movie and one of my favorites, I have to say, too. Oh, brother, where art thou? In the movie, he sings a traditional Appalachian song, Oh, Death, and it was that song that won Ralph Stanley a Grammy Award in 2002 in the category of Best Male Country Vocal Performance. In his later years, Dr. Stanley kept up his touring, appearing at the 2012 Muddy Roots Music Festival in Cookville, Tennessee, in 2013 at the Fresh Grass Festival in Massachusetts. That's right. They have people that love bluegrass up in the Northeast Mm -hmm. and especially up toward Massachusetts and New Hampshire and places like that. And he started a farewell tour in the fall of 2013 and ending December of 2014. Now, the farewell tour became a tour when Ralph Stanley changed his mind about ending his career and being elected as a fellow of the Academy, or I should say the American Academy of Arts and Sciences in October of 2014. Turns out, though, ironically, that it actually was a farewell. You see, it was discovered that Dr. Stanley had skin cancer, and he died from the disease on June 23rd, 2016, in Coburn, Virginia. Now, there's a museum dedicated to Ralph Stanley in Clintwood, the Ralph Stanley Museum and Traditional Mountain Music Center, which opened in 2004. And that museum is on the Crooked Road Heritage Music Trail. And I think you were telling me that that used to be a funeral home? Yes, it did. Actually, it was the home of Senator Roland Chase, State Senator Roland Chase at one time. And that was one of the predominant features, I guess, of the town of Clintwood at, at that time, probably in about the teens and 20s on up. And then Roland Chase's uh, relative on down the line, I think either nephew or grandson, nephew or something like that, opened up Miller Funeral Home there. And then Miller Funeral Home stayed there until uh, R.C., who ran the uh, funeral home at one time until his uh, passing. And then they got these ideas of what they were going to do with it. And so the proposal was put in front of uh, the town of Clintwood and the town of Clintwood made a, well, how can we say this? Sort of like a grant, you know, a bid for a grant. Mm -hmm. And they came up with some uh, grant money. And then lo and behold, before your eyes, the Ralph Stanley Museum uh, was dedicated. And it's, it's a nice place. It's a great facility. Um, I'm sure you can probably see tours online somewhere of the Ralph Stanley Museum, but still, you've got to experience it in person to actually get a grasp of what the entire museum is all about. And folks, that's the story of Ralph Stanley. Another bit of the history of this place we call home, Appalachia. Thanks for listening. You be sure to subscribe to our podcast on your favorite podcast app and to our YouTube channel by clicking that subscribe button below the video. Till next we meet, y'all take care. So long, everybody.